viewers, welcome to CEC online lectures. In today's lecture, we shall be discussing alkyl halides. Alkyl halides are examples of organic halides. Organic halides are derivatives of hydrocarbons. They are obtained by replacing hydrogen atoms of hydrocarbons. Depending on the structure of hydrocarbon, halogenated organic compounds are of three types. Halogen, derivatives of saturated hydrocarbons, which are known as alkyl halides. Halogen derivatives of unsaturated hydrocarbons, which are alkynyl halides. And halogen derivatives of benzene, which are known as aryl halides. If we look into the structure of alkyl halides, then what we find is that the carbon of alkyl halides is sp3 hybridized. Here I shall be illustrating the structure of alkyl halides by taking the example of methyl halide. As I have said that the carbon in alkyl halides is sp3 hybridized. That means it will form four sigma bonds. Three sigma bonds are formed by overlapping of sp3 hybridized orbital of carbon with s orbitals of hydrogen. Whereas the fourth bond is formed between sp3 hybridized orbital of carbon and sp3 hybridized atom of halogen. We know that halogens are more electronegative as compared to carbon as a result of which they will pull the electrons toward itself through minus i effect and halogens have a slight negative charge and carbon has a slight positive charge. Hence this bond is polar in nature with slight positive charge on carbon atom. The halogens may be fluoro, chloro, bromo or iodo. Since the bond is polar in nature and carbon has a positive charge, these compounds have a tendency to undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions which we shall be discussing in details in our future lectures. Now if we talk of vinyl halides, then what we find in vinyl halides and aryl halides, the carbon to which the halogen atom is attached is sp2 hybridized. And since halogen has lone pair of electrons on it and the carbon bearing this halogen atom is sp2 hybridized, that is, there is conjugation between the lone pair of electrons and the pi bond. This compounds tend to undergo resonance. As a result of which, these compounds are unreactive towards nucleophilic substitution reactions. The next category of organic halides are allylic halides and benzylic halides. In allylic halides, the halogen atom is bonded to a carbon which is adjacent to a C-C double bond. Similarly, in benzylic halides also, X is bonded to a carbon which is adjacent to the benzene ring. So in this case, what we find is that the halogen is attached to a carbon which is sp3 hybridized which in turn is attached to a sp2 hybridized carbon and these compounds are found to be quite reactive towards nucleophilic substitution reactions. Taking the discussion further on alkyl halides, we can divide alkyl halides into mono, di, tri, or tetrahaloalkanes depending on the nature of halogen atoms in the molecule. Again, taking the example of methane, what I have shown on your screens is 
That is, if we replace one hydrogen with a halogen atom, it is a monohalide. If two hydrogens are replaced, it is a dihalide. And if three or four hydrogens are replaced, then it is a tri or a tetrahalide respectively. Now these halides are classified on the basis of the type of carbon atom to which the halogen is attached. That is, monohalides may be primary, secondary or tertiary depending on the number of carbon atoms bonded to the bond to which the halogen atom is attached. The halogen atom is donated by a X symbol in, my, in the structures which are coming on your screen. A primary, in a primary alkyl halide, when the carbon containing at halogen is attached to one carbon or no other carbon, then it is a primary alkyl halide. Whereas, when we talk, now if we look into the example of a primary alkyl halide, what we find is that methyl halide is a primary halide. Since in it, halogen is attached to a carbon which is attached to no other carbons. If we look into the next structure, what we find is in this case, the carbon bearing the halogen atom is attached to one other carbon or to an alkyl group. And taking the example of this primary alkyl halides, what you can see on your screens is an example of 2,2-dimethyl idobutane. Although we have a branching in this compound, still this compound is a primary alkyl halide since in it the carbon which is bearing the halogen atom that is the idro group is directly attached to one other carbon. Secondary halides are those in which the carbon atom containing the halogen atom is attached to two other carbon atoms. For example, that is if the carbon atom is, when I say is attached to two other carbon atoms, that is it will be attached to two alkyl groups. The example that I have taken here is an example of a cyclic compound which is a secondary alkyl halide and it is bromocyclohexane. And in this case, bromo group is attached to a carbon which is attached to two carbons. A tertiary halkyl halide is one in which the carbon atom containing the halogen atom is attached to three other carbon atoms. As shown, the carbon atom is attached to three other alkyl groups and in this case I have taken an example of a tertiary chloride in which the example is 3-methyl, 3 3-chloropentane. 3 and what we find in this example is that halogen is attached to three alkyl groups which are 1-methyl and 2-ethyl groups. So in this case, the carbon is a tertiary carbon, that is car halogen is attached to that carbon which is attached to three alkyl groups or to three carbons directly. Now we shall discuss nomenclature of al alkyl halides. Alkyl halides can be named by two methods, that is the common or the trivial names or the IUPAC naming. So if I talk of a common or a, or a trivial name, then in this case, the name of the alkyl residue is followed by the name of the halide. And these, the common names are useful only for naming simple alkyl halides. That is, if I want to name a chloromethane, that is a simplest alkyl halide, so what you have to keep in mind is, that is, First, we will name the alkyl part of the compound and then we will indicate the name of the halogen atom which is attached to it. So, the first example that we've taken 
is methyl chloride. Second has two carbons in the alkyl chain. So that means the group will become ethyl and the halogen atom attached here is fluorine. So the name will be ethyl fluoride. Now similarly, when I talk of the next example, this is very important. When we were talking of methyl chloride or ethyl chloride, these were normal. That is, in this case, the main carbon chain is just containing one carbon or two carbons in it. Whereas if we look into the next example, then in next example, the iodo group is attached to a second carbon. And we know if we talk of the naming of this alkyl group, this is an isopropyl group. What is an isopropyl group? Isopropyl group is a group in which we have three carbons which we are indicating by the word propyl. And iso indicates that at the last carbon is joined to the next carbon with a methyl group. So in this case, we can name this compound as isopropyl iodide. Now, if we look into the next example, in that case, the carbon chain is a straight chain. But the bromo group is attached to a secondary carbon. That is a carbon which is attached directly to two other carbons. And this compound is named as secondary butyl bromide. And if we look into the third example, fifth example, then what we find is that the carbon is attached to three groups, three methyl groups and the carbon is hence tertiary in nature. Since it is tertiary in nature and it has four carbons in it, this group will become tertiary butyl and the name will, compound will be named as tertiary butyl bromide. Now if we talk of the IUPAC nomenclature, then we follow the same rules as we follow for naming alkanes. That is, the longest carbon chain will be taken as the parent chain. And the halogen group will be treated as a substituate. That is, if we look into the priority table of naming, a priority table of the groups while we are following IUPAC naming, then what we find is that halogens come below alkane, alkene and alkyne. That is, these groups are treated as substituent groups. So if we are taking it as substituent, what we have to remember is that the name of the halogen, halo group, will come before the parent chain, which is alkane, alkene or alkyne and will be named as a substituent. So it will be added as a prefix that is before the root name. So let us name, give the IUPAC name of this alkyl halide. And what we find in this alkyl halide is that it is having, how many carbons? It is having seven carbons in the longest carbon chain. So that means the root name will become hept because it is having seven carbons. And since it is a saturated compound, it will be named as heptane. Now we have two group substituents. One is at the second carbon, which is the halogen, that is chloride. And then at the fifth carbon, we have a methyl group. Now the question arises, how will we number the chain? Please remember, we will number the chain from the site, which will give lowest number to the halogen atom. That is, we will number the chain from the right hand side to left hand side in which the chlorine is the chloro group is getting number two and the methyl group is getting number five. So the name will now become 2-chloro-5-methyl heptane. Please remember, if you've done everything correct, that is chloromethyl heptane but if the numbering is wrong, that is if we number from left side to the right side, then the numbering would become 5-chloro-3-methyl-heptane, which is not correct. What you have to remember is 
we have to number from the site which will give us the lower number at the first point of difference. So as now I've written the full name of this compound and you have to remember is that when we are writing the name of the substituents that is in, in the prefix that is chloro and methyl then they have to be written in alphabetical order irrespective of their position. So the name will become 2-chloro 5-methyl heptane. Let us look into another example which is an alkyl uh, halide which is an halide of an unsaturated hydrocarbon that is which is containing a double bond. In this case what you'll remember is that the name the root name will become alkyl where alk will indicate the number of carbon atoms and what we find in this case is that the hydrocarbon that I've shown on the screen has how many carbons in it? It has five carbons in the longest carbon chain. Now what you have to remember is as I've already said that al alkane, alkene and alkyne take first positions or they take priority over the halogen atom, halogen group. Therefore here we will give higher priority to the double bond. That is double bond will be given lower number. So in this case we will do the numbering from left side to the right hand side. So the name will become two, uh, bent to in that is the part of the hydrocarbon that is the root name. That is five uh, number two is indicating the position of the double bond. Pent is indicating the number of the carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon and ene is indicating that the compound is unsaturated. Now we have to write the full name of the compound so the name will become 5-chloro-2-methyl-pent-2-ene. Pent this will be the complete name of the compound which we have shown here. So now we have finished with the general introduction of alkyl halides. In my next lecture, we shall be discussing methods of preparation of alkyl halides. Thank you.